Welcome to the City of Arlington Planning Development Services. Today our workshop is ePlan Review Workshop, How to Use ArlingtonPermits.com. My name is Stephen Quirk. I'm the Development Services Supervisor. Along with me, my partner is Jeremy Booker, Booker the Assistant Building Official. The second part of this workshop is talking about ePlan Review and how to upload your electronic plans for construction review and permitting. So with that, I'll get started and do my part and then we'll transition later to Jeremy's. So our topics today are use, becoming a user on ArlingtonPermits.com, applying for your permit, uploading your plans, paying for your permit, and then Jeremy will talk about your e-plan review submittal requirements, printing your permit, and printing your approved plans. So this is our website, ArlingtonPermits.com. We recently had a facelift at the end of, the, end of March, so just get familiar with this. If you're a previous user for ArlingtonPermits.com, please delete a previous bookmark and bookmark this new site as our uh, new page. I'm going to walk you through first on how to become a first-time user of our website. If you will notice uh, up, up, up in the upper right-hand corner where it's under the login, it says first-time user and register. So let's go ahead and walk through that process. Again, it's up in the upper right-hand corner. We want to click on register. First thing it'll ask you to do is confirm your email address. Type it in, email address, and then confirm, and then hit continue. You'll get this little notification box. It'll say, for verification purposes, an email with further instructions has been sent to you in your email. Please also not only check your inbox, but your spam and your other folders, just in case you have certain security measures on your email, and it may direct this email to other locations. You'll get a no reply email from no reply at arlingtontx.com. Just what it means. Please do not reply to the email. Scroll down and look through the uh, email. At the bottom, there is a link. We want you to click on that link to proceed with the registration process. Uh, the first steps are entering your first name and your last name. Notice that on this page, it says register a PIN number. Uh, we use the PIN number for other registration processes, so for now, I want you to ignore that reg registration PIN number. Um, hit Submit. Uh, you're going to be asked to enter your password, confirm your password. There are several uh, password reminder questions and an answer. Those are up to you. You can select whatever ones you want and then hit Update. It's going to ask you for some user information. Every box or every field with a red asterisk, we need information from you, so please complete those fully. Uh, go down through the page, fill in everything. Once you've submitted everything, uh, at the bottom of the page, hit Submit. You're going to get confirmation registration. Online registration was completed successfully. You can log in to uh, ArlingtonPermits.com now, so hit the Go to Login button and you are directed back to our website. So the first thing I want to talk to you about uh, proceed, before you proceed with actually submitting a permit application, with our ePlan review, we have a software called Scout. Scout is designed by our ePlan soft vendor. It's designed to uh, make sure that your plans will be uploaded successfully. So there is a link over in the links and resources under the help. Uh, it says ePlan Scout PDF Analyzer. We want you to click on that and go through the steps on that. Jeremy will explain that a little bit further in his part of the pr presentation. But that's the first thing you want to do is click on that, go to the software, it'll upload a page, and there you will upload your plans to that analyzer, PDF analyzer, to make sure or to ensure that your plans will, are okay to upload onto our website. It just takes a few minutes and it'll also give you some assistance if there's an error message on that. So that's the first thing you want to do before you start your permit process. So after you've done that, your plans have been checked okay to upload. I'll step you through the process to um, do your permit. So up in the upper right, we have the login. You're going to log in with your email and your password that you created and hit submit. Now when you get to the what we call our uh, My Services screen or the home screen on our page, you'll see at the top it says My Services, Apply, Renew, Inspections, and Pay Fees. I want you to click on that uh, Apply button. Also notice that, that when you become a regular user on our site, when you log in, it, it brings up your permit history and then below that on the pages below, also your business registration and other permit history for you. So right now, my example here is a residential permit for new construction. 
So when I clicked on apply, I'm on select, I'm, I'm on step one. And here uh, you will notice three headings, registrations and licenses, building permits and other permits. I want you to click on the middle one that says building permits. So it's gonna give you the list of all of our building permits here. Um, we're gonna do the residential permit that I have highlighted. So on our drop down, it uh, will ask you to choose a subtype. And then my subtype here is single family. The next question is choose a work code. And the work codes being what are you doing? In this example, we're doing new construction. Now you're gonna be asked to find the job address for that construction site. Where is this house gonna be built? Start out with the street number, street, street direction, and the street name, and then click search. Notice too, at this, step, uh, at this step, we have two buttons down there. One is the search button to search for the address. The second one is unknown property not found. I'll talk about that one in the next slide if the search results reveal no address. Luckily, in my example here, I do have an address of 101 West Abram Street, but if you had no results here, you can use that unknown property not found button to proceed through the permit process, and I'll explain that in the next screen. So since we did find the address, we're going to check, we're going to select that first uh, address in our results field, and we're going to just simply sit select. So we're still in step one, and this box of required, uh, the required box here, it says address of the job, if the property was not found, name of the project, and detailed explanation of scope. So we do need you to fill in what you're doing, in, and simply here is just type in single family new construction at, and give us the address. That way when it comes across on our side, we can see it, we can quickly find the address where you're doing the job, and we can uh, uh, complete that addressing process for you. So once you've typed in that little bit of information, hit continue. Now we're gonna get into the uh, input information. We're on step two, and we're gonna be asking for detailed information or permit details about this project. Um, everything with a red asterisk by it in the general requirements, we need information from you to complete this permit application. So anything that is a red asterisk would typically be fields of construction value declared, scope of work, type of lot drainage, is your job gonna be requiring mechanical, electrical, and plumbing permits? What is the area of the garage? Is it a corner lot, energy code compliance? So those are some of the fields of information you will need to complete for us. Once you've completed all that information for us and, and you are now ready to move on, but at the bottom of the screen, we have application information. We need a primary contact email, and this is to ensure that our plans examiner can contact and be in contact with you directly. So be sure you type that in and then select continue. Now we're at the point where ready, you're ready to upload your construction plans. So the first thing that we want you to do is look at the attachment field. Uh, it's a drop down box actually. The two types that you are going to select are electronic plans and or, or plan review documentation. So you'll have two options there. So I just simply select electronic plans and then I will click on the browse button. And what that's gonna direct you to do is find those construction plans on your hard drive. Again, like I said, the two options are plan review documentation and electronic plans. This means that once our system recognizes those plans, those will be submitted or, or pushed over to our ePlan review software. So when you've selected browse and you're gonna go find your uh, file name with, that holds all your construction plans for this project, select that file. I apologize for the quality of the screen, but uh, anyway, I'm just trying to give you an idea of, of the steps involved here. Make sure that your file is a PDF and an Adobe Acrobat file, please. Select that file and you'll notice that when you come back to our screen, it shows you the file location. That's okay, just don't worry about that, that's, that's fine. We also want you to, just above that file line or box, is an attachment description. And we simply want you to put in there the construction plans. Now move on down the screen to where it says add attachment, and then we want you to click uh, the add attachment button. You should, hopefully, get a green pop-up box that says upload success. That means your plans are now uh, successfully attached and in our system. You will also note that uh, 
you have an attachment list box there, and it will show you that what you have just recently uploaded. Next step is I want you to uh, select either version one, uh, where it says additional attachment details. And once you've selected that, I want you to save the attachment info. If you have any, any other supporting documents, now's the time to upload those. Supporting documents are calculations, uh, other asbestos surveys or things of that nature that are not the construction plans. They are in support of your construction plans. And then you can select the attachment type of miscellaneous. So we'll know that those are not going to be pushed over to our e-plan e review. So if you finish with all uploading your attachments, I want, to, want you to hit continue. Now we're on step four and uh, is to agree to the terms. Uh, please confirm the following details and it has a statement there to make sure that everything is true and accurate. Uh, please click on agree. Uh, if you click on I disagree, the permit does not move forward. Once you've clicked on agree, it gives you a payment option. So you'll be presented with two fees and a plan review fee and the residential building permit fee. In all cases, we do need a, a RP P plan review fee paid up front in order to get the process started. So you're given the option here of paying both fees or just the one fee. So you're going to select pay now. The next screen is going to let you select a checkbox out next to those fees. Uh, so you must check the box for RP plan review. That must be checked. If you decide to, to pay everything now, that's great. Then both boxes should be checked. Uh, so that's your option at the moment. Just know that RP plan review fee is required to start the process. Once you've checked the fees to pay, you'll select check fees to pay. You're going to be presented with the payment screen. Here's where we're going to give you two options on how to pay. One is called an ACH transaction. One is a credit card. The ACH transaction is a transaction through your bank. You will need to get. You will need to contact your bank and have them authorize that the city of Arlington is going to withdraw funds from your checking account to pay for this plan review fee. Uh, depending on your bank, it could be a one time or it could be a multiple times after that. But make sure you've checked with your bank on first the ACH transaction if that's what you choose. We do accept credit card transactions as well. In this example, I simply selected credit cards. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, it says proceed to secure payment page. This is the, uh, the, uh, the sheet or the page where you're going to be asked to enter, uh, confirm your contact information, make sure you have your first name, your last name, company name is optional, your city, straight, city street zip code and your phone number and your email. Uh, the payment method at the bottom, please be sure you're entering your credit card number, expiration date and card security code. Once you've entered that, hit confirm. Now it's going to give you another page. It looks like the same one you just came from, which is true, but you are reviewing the payment here at this point. At the top of the page, it's telling you what you're about to pay for. So notice that you have your payment amount. There is a convenient fee for using a credit card online. Uh, so it'll add those two together and give you a total amount, the payment date. And it's actually also giving you your permit number right there. So be sure you reference that. That is the permit number for which you are applying for. And the other information should be the same uh, as what you just entered. So you are now ready to uh, confirm. When you have hit confirm, notice this page here is very key here. This is a confirmation page right here. This is a confirmation of your payment, your confirmation number right there. And you're also allowed to print this page for your records uh, to keep book track of it for your accounting department. And it also, again, re-details re for you the payment amount your convenience fee, your total amount, and again, your permit number. So that is your uh, payment screen, uh, your confirmation payment screen, and now we're ready to return to arlingtonpermits.com by clicking at the button at the bottom. So you're brought back to your main page, which is the My Services screen. Notice at the top where I've highlighted is that permit that we just completed. It gives you uh, your permit number, the address for which the job is taking place, what is the status of it, and if you have a balance or anything is due on it. Uh, like I said, once you become a frequent user of our website, all this history is kept there, and every time you log in, you can see all of your permits that you have uh, applied for. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy Booker. He is the assistant building official to talk to you about the e-plan submittal requirements. The second part of this presentation is going to cover the file parameters that will be uploaded for, for electronic plan review. And then we'll talk a little bit about downloading the plans and then printing the permit. So we, as Steve touched on a little bit earlier, there's two types of files that are used for electronic plan review. The first type is what we call the electronic plans. And these are your actual construction documents. These are your architectural plans, your structural, your mechanical, electrical, plumbing plans. And then the other type are what we call the supporting documents, and these are your calculations, asbestos surveys, your material brochures, things like that. So the first part I'm going to talk about, this is the formatting requirements for the electronic plans. And the first thing is, is that they need to be in black and white. And the reason why is that when our plans examiners mark up the plans, they do it in color. So we don't want there to be any confusion with what was originally part of the plans versus what is a markup by the plans examiner. So please use black and white plot. Plans need to be to scale. Please use a common architectural or engineer scale and indicate the scale on the plans themselves. And the electronic plans need to be in PDF format, version 1.4 or later. And the file size is a maximum of 300 megabytes. If the file does exceed 300 megabytes, you can break that down into, into two or more files. But outside of that, we, we'd want the, just a single file not to exceed 300 megabytes. The, all pages need to be up, orientated upright, not sideways or upside down. And then the files need to be flat. And oftentimes when you convert it from a CAD, there's multiple layers. These need to be flattened before you, you submit these for electronic plan review. File encryption, no passwords or, or encrypted documents. We need to be able to open these documents. And scan files are acceptable as long as they meet all the other formatting requirements that I've just discussed. And then all files need to be grouped into a single file. So oftentimes you'll see plans, maybe they're separated out in different files based on trade and mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and so forth. We want all files to be grouped into a single document to a single file. Again, unless you exceed the 300 megabytes, then you can break those up into two or more files. We don't have a specific file naming system, but we ask that you name it a, a name that we can easily identify what the file is. So the common names to use would be either the project address or the project name. And the file name should not exceed 140, 140 characters in length. Steve also touched on this a little bit. Uh, how do you know if your plans comply before you submit them for, uh, for application? And at ArlingtonPermits.com, we have the link to what we call the scout. This is the analyzer that, that checks the plans to make sure that, that uh, all the formatting requirements are, are in place. So, so as you see on the screen, there's the, uh, the website where you can directly go directly to, that, to the scout, or you can also find the link on our, on our web page. So we ask that you please run your files, your electronic plans, through the scout prior to applying, because if there is an error during the application process, it won't let you move forward, and it may time you out while you're working on correcting whatever error is brought up. So please run it through scout before you start your application process. Okay, now moving on to, to the supporting of documents. Again, these are, are those documents that are not your construction plans, not your electronic plans. And some of the examples, again, are calculations, asbestos surveys. It, and so this file type can be any type. It can be in a Word file. It can be, a, it can be Excel. But we ask that you, you submit them in PDF. It's just our preference. Because sometimes uh, our programs what, may not match exactly with what program you're using. And so there can be errors. But PDF tends to eliminate that. So again, any type is acceptable. But we prefer PDF. On the supporting documents, again, there's a maximum file size of 300 megabytes. And on the file orientation, we want all files to be upright also on these. So we can't have any damaged files. You gotta be, we have to, if it's a PDF, we need to be able to open it up in Adobe. And then again, no password or, or encrypted files. Got to be able to open these also. And same as with the electronic plans, uh, uh, scanned files are acceptable as long as they meet all the other parameters. On the, on the file naming for the supporting documents, again, there's no method that we, that we have on what the file name is, but we do ask that you do not name it the same name as what you did for your electronic plans. So if you named the electronic plans your project name, please use a different file name for your supporting documents. And then also you cannot use pound plus or the ampersand in the file name. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about, about resubmittal. 
so you've already uploaded your plans, it's gone through, through review, and the project manager has contacted you that there are documents there. So you've made the changes and now you're ready to, to resubmit these. So whenever you're resubmitting, please use the exact same file name as you did on the original file. Don't add any other any letters or characters to the end of the, of the, um, the file name. Use the exact same file name as you did on the original file. If you have to add any new pages to the plans, please add those at, at the end of the document. And the reason why is that our software is able to do a page-by-page -page comparison of the initial submittal versus any resubmittals. And if you place a new page in there, it'll get all the plans out of order and it'll, it'll mess up the process. So any new pages, please add those at the end. Even if it places those out of order, those new pages need to go at the end. And again, don't reorder the pages, leave them in the, in the same order as the initial submittal. And if you need to remove a page, please leave the, the page that was removed as a blank page and indicate if the page was deleted or if it was moved. And again, if you rearrange, extract, or insert new pages out of order, it could delay the, the, uh, the time for review. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about revision. The revision is when the original set of plans have been approved and the permit may have been issued, you've started construction and you realize you need to change something and resubmit those for review. So we call that a, a revision to approve plans. <clears throat> On these, you can use this, you need to use a, um, you, 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 there's no requirements on what the file name is. So you can use, again, the project name, you can use the, the address, but just something that helps us identify what the, what the file is. And something that we would recommend that you add, and maybe at the end of the, the file name to add revision one or REV01, just so we can easily and quickly identify that that's a, a revision. So it goes through the review, your revision goes through review, and now you need to resubmit on, on the revision. So now again, that needs to be the same as the original, the file name needs to be the same as what your resubmittal or what your revision was. So I have an example here uh, on, at the bottom of the screen. So the first file name was uh, fire sprinkler diagrams.pdf. That was approved and issued for a permit. Now a change was submitted. So the new file name is fire sprinkler diagrams rev01. And after review, there were some revisions that needed to be made. And so the, you resubmitted with this exact same file name as you did with the, the first revision. After, the, after our, our plans examiner complete the reviews, the project manager will send an email to the applicant and the owner if the owner is included on the application or is otherwise identified on, on that application. So that's how you'll know when you're ready to download plans. So you log back in to arlingtonpermits.com. You can click on the link to the, to the permit and the, from now there, just follow the screen down to where it has the, the, the um, attachments and you can download the plans. So anyone that's identified on the application can view these. So it doesn't need to be just the applicant. If you include the general contractor, the, the owner, the architect, engineers, if you identify those on the plans, on, on, on the application, they can download the plans. So the plans have been approved and now you're ready to, to start construction. We need paper plans on site for all inspections and the plans must be printed in color. And the plans need to be printed on the same size paper as the file size. So for example, if the file is 24 inches by 36 inches, they need to be printed on the same size paper. If by chance you do print on something smaller than what the file size is, your inspection may not be performed just because it's difficult for an inspector to read those plans. And then printing your permit. You can also print your permit from ap.com or arlingtonpermits.com once all the fees are approved and you've been notified that the permit is ready, that the, uh, the plans have been approved. So if you have any questions, you can see our contact information on the screen, both Steve and I, Jeremy Booker, are on the screen, and then also Ariel Sturmer, our plans examiner supervisor, is a, is a good source for any questions. You see both all of our email address and, and then our, our direct office phone number on, on the screen. So again, we, we thank you for attending today and we look forward to working with you.